almost 200 now going forward. This is just the public domain publication. I'm therefore confident that today's public lecture will help our understanding of the mechanisms for waste management processes, thereby paving ways to solving the pertinent problems, the pertinent issues associated with disposal management and of course utilization of waste in our community. Now let me say this again, with this timing is most apt. The incoming Vice Chancellor is the Director of Waste to Wealth from Covenant University. And so we have been talking, I'm most excited because going forward, Landmark University will be better for it. Some people have been asking, why are we having this inaugural um, public lecture today? Why not wait till, why not? I said, no, I'm not going to wait because it's one of the baby programs which I instituted and it must continue <laughs> while I step down the office of the vice chancellor. And noting again this public lecturer, he will be rounding up his sabbatical with us. So as we resume come late September, he will be disengaging. And so this is the most apt time to have him come on board. And so on this note, it is therefore my greatest humble opportunity to welcome us all to the sixth inaugural lecture, to which I believe the Lord has brought us into a good land, and the land of landmark shall yield for us all in Jesus' mighty name. And so welcome to the sixth public lecture of Landmark University. Congratulations and God bless you all. Thank you, Ma. Please let's put our hands together once again. Thank you for that remark. We'll be going into the nitty gritty of today's work and I'll be calling on Dr. C.B. Okidare to read the citation of the lecturer for today. The Vice Chancellor, Landmark University. All other protocols duly observed. I consider it a great privilege to be called upon to read the citation of our speaker of today. I personally got to know him in year 2021 when I went to the University of Illinois to examine postgraduate students. And since then, we have forged close ties. And I didn't know he would be here on sabbatical. And again, we met here. Without wasting time, let me proceed to read the citation of this erudite scholar. Dr. Adewale George Adeni. Sorry, please. Let me take that. While I read his citation, I invite Dr. Adewale Adeni to humbly stand up. Yes, he's already standing. Yes, thank you. Yes, it's the normal thing to do. Dr. Adewale George Adeni is a renowned scholar whose remarkable contributions in the field of process and process development, solid waste management, and environmental pollution control have led to indelible mark on academia and beyond. With a career spanning over 15 years, Dr. Adeni's commitment to pioneering research and cutting-edge advancements hand him widespread recognition. Throughout his journey, Dr. Adeni's dedication to excellence has been evident. His academic journey began as a graduate assistant in the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Lorraine in 2008. Since then, he has ascended through the ranks to his current status as a senior lecturer. 
Dr. Adeni's passion for environmental sustainability and innovative engineering solutions has led him to publish over 250 articles in both national and international journals. And he currently has over 5,000 citations in Google Scholar. Beyond his prolific publications record, he serves as a peer, review, review, peer reviewer for more than 30 esteemed national and international journals, a testament to his dedication to advancing scholarly discourse. Dr. Adeni's achievement extends beyond scholarly pursuit. His notable accolades include being recognized as one of the top 2% I take that, two, top 2% two scientists in Nigeria by Sanford University in 2022. Earning the prestigious title of the best researcher of the year at the University of Lorraine in 2021. And receiving the Ballistic Product Development Award of his groundbreaking contributions to material research. His dedication to environmental protection and sustainable practices is further exemplified by his recipient of the Damutek Award for Support in Environmental Management Research and the Award of Recognition from the Nigeria Army System Development Center. Dr. Adeni's tireless efforts to advance innovative solutions have earned him recognition and positions of leadership within academic and professional cycles. His scholarly impact is magnified by his ranking among top authors by scholarly outputs in Nigeria, holding the eighth position in a recently published list by Scopus. In addition to his claims, in addition, he claims the first position among the top-rated unilaurine academics on Scopus and secures the esteemed status of being the third most impactful unilaurine dawn on Google Scholar. His impact however, extends beyond research and publications. Dr. Adeni's leadership is resoundingly evident in his roles as the past head of department at the Department of Chemical Engineering, University of Illorin, his current position as the assistant director of the Illorin Laboratory to Product Center, and his role as secretary of the Material Science and Technology Society of Nigeria. These roles embody his unwavering dedication to guiding and shaping the next generation of scholars and engineers, a testament to his commitment and mentorship and academic growth. In his pursuit of excellence, Dr. Adeni has led groundbreaking material and product development research with notable achievements that include successful utilization of solvated polystyrene resin as a substitute for epoxy resin in composite development. This achievement has not only resulted in over 35 publications, but has also led to the filing of a patent, of patents, one of which has entered the development stage of the ballistic ap applications. Additionally, Dr. Adeni's pioneering work in biomass carbonization and biomass plastic carbonization is evident of its commitment to environmental sustainability and pollution control. His team's achievements as the first to successfully attempt biomass plastic carbonization globally, along with more than 20 publications on retort heated carbonization reactors, demonstrates his dedication to exploring innovative solutions with real world impact. Dr. Adeni is happily married with children. As anticipation builds for Dr. Adeni's upcoming lecture, it is imperative to acknowledge his extraordinary contributions to academia, research, and environmental stewardship. Dr. Adeni's unwavering dedication to advancing sustainable practices and pushing the boundaries of scientific inquiries positions him as an exceptional role model and an inspiration to all. Through his remarkable pursuit of excellence, 
Dr. Adenyi has forged a legacy that continues to shape the landscape of chemical engineering and environmental science. At this juncture, and with the kind permission of the Vice Chancellor, I want to humbly request that everyone seated rises up to celebrate this heritage scholar with a rapturous applause. As I invite Dr. George, Dr. Adewale George, I didn't need to take the public lecture. Thank you. Please get seated. Let's be on our seats. I want to take this opportunity to appreciate God for this opportunity. I am going to go through some process of a bit of a testimony while I introduce this topic. Uh, I will be talking briefly in the next 30 minutes, 35, 40, on advancements in Baumas plastic waste management towards a sustainable circular economy. On the first note, I want to appreciate God Almighty for making his spirit available to lead this process that we have been talking about. It has been on my mind that I am going to have my sabbatical leave with Covenant University. That has been my mind. I knew with what I have been pursuing in my mind that this is no time to do it outside the country. Yes, because of the process of time and details I'm not going to take you through. I applied to Covenant University, but I was not called. Yes, I was like, what's the meaning of this? Why would they see my application and they will not? I called the HOD. He said he will call. He will call. And I was rounding up as the HOD. Along the line, I got a link to my HOD and a friend. And I started by answering to uh, agents. Before I stayed two weeks of agents, I decided I'm coming here. And I applied. At the point of application, I'm saying this for those people that are having vision and focusing on God. Whatever you decide under God in this commission by faith is approved. I'm not expecting a menu. I'm talking about what I know. You know, our vice chancellor as going has been so prophetical in her administrative role. She said, Dr. Adeneyi, we were expecting nothing less than 10 paper from you. As I was going down, I said, I'm going to give 30. I told myself. By the grace of God, when I submitted my report two weeks ago or three weeks ago, it was 27. As I stand there, it's 31. <laughs> you know, by the law of talent, when you walk through a process, you'll be rewarded. Anything that you say under God, anything that you do to serve God in this commission is rewarded. You know, God is not a man that will forget your labor of love. The name of God is put here. And anything research, anything that they call problem in the world, when we dedicate our mind and expect God to inspire us, we are going to solve global problems. On this note, I want to appreciate my vice chancellor on, uh, as going and incoming. Both are my teachers from Lautech. It will interest you. Yeah. <laughs> Professor Ajanaku taught me chemistry in 300 level and in 100 level in Lautech. Uh, once again, I want to appreciate the role that the two of you have taken 
in extending knowledge and academia in Nigeria, the Almighty God will continue to strengthen you. Uh, coming back to this, while I'm standing on existing protocol, I appreciate everyone that is here this afternoon. Advancement in biomass plastic waste management towards a sustainable circular economy. Let me briefly talk about the topic so that we know the scope. Now, the first thing is that the advancements that I'm referring to, you will eventually see I'll be emphasizing my contributions. So I'll be talking about what I have done to advance it. When I talk about the circular economy, I'm going to be talking about what low-income low countries like us, Nigeria, and some countries in Africa can do to actually advance our economy and put it in circular mode in such a way that we take the advantage of our existence and get the best of it. You know, the whole world has been given to us, and the, 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 whatever we do with it determines what we get from it. So I'm going to be talking about that. Um, I'm going to be emphasizing on how we can achieve circular economy. On this note, I want to appreciate our papa and mama uh, that God has put as the head of this commission. I want to appreciate the approval given to this public lecture. I call him skillful master builder, the building man for excellence. You know why God has appointed him as skillful master builder? I want to call all of us that are in pursuit of excellence. We should be careful what we are putting on the foundation. This university, as the vice chancellor have said, can solve problems. All over the world, we can get the best as the Lord has destined us. On this note, I'm appreciating every one of us once again. Uh, I go ahead to appreciate my vice chancellor, the outgoing and the incoming. I want to appreciate your role and the belief in what God is doing in my life as far as research and development is concerned. I appreciate the outgoing and incoming registrar. Thank you for everything. My outline this afternoon, I am putting it in form of graphical and a verbal form. You know, Baumast plastic waste is what we are going to be looking at. We are going to be looking at environmental impact, and it's going to looking at what value-added products can we get from it. But I want to put a statement across to us as we start this journey together. And I want us to read it together. I'm, going, I'm putting it on red now. Later, I will bring it back in green. Later, I'm going to bring the same statement back to us in blue. And we are going to make a commitment together to see what we can achieve as individual, both public and academia. Baumas plastic waste generation has been designated unavoidable in our contemporary time and age. I'm coming to establish that. That is the first statement. Waste to energy management options are not equally sustainable in the low income country. They are not in the low income country. Somebody can pursue this as a research. They are not. And I, I'm going to establish that. Then, if they are not, the next question or the next concern is that how do we get the best? What are the technology that we can pursue as uh, researchers that are introducing a uh, solution to societal problem? Now, I'm going to start with the triangulation of some critical socioeconomic factor. Triangulation of critical socioeconomic factor. There are three important factors that are triangulating. At the base of it is the term advancement in population and global modernization. There is advancement in population, modernization is coming in. 
For example, all the beverages that we used to drink in glass bottle before are now being drank in what? In plastic bottle. The number of people that are drinking plastic, uh, that are drinking uh, uh, those beverages have increased. Night, we are not only abandoning it, those things that we, material we, are, we used to use, we are using the modern one. There are a generation of children that do not know the bonfita in a big thing again. They only met them in sachets. And those sachets are not only plastic, they are lined with aluminum, making them to be difficult to recycle because they are not combustible. So as the, we have advances in population, also there is higher demand for energy, food, and consumer goods. The number of people is increasing, the, 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 the population is increasing, the demand for energy, the demand for food, and demand for several services have also increased. Now, those are the two. The third one coming, and the advancements in biomass and plastic waste generation. Now, I call them triangulation. What's supposed to be positive has become negative. Because at least, if you look at the triangle, you discover that the, it's, it's not a solid triangle. It's a hollow triangle. Inside it, I believe you and I can suggest what we can put inside it when we are modeling triangulation. Inside it, greenhouse gas, global warming, sickness, unemployment, and so on and so forth. There is no how we are going to continue to burn the plastic and biomass that the triangle will not keep in, in uh, focus. Something comes to my mind now. You know, what of if the triangle is opened, what do we have? We are going to, triangle is like this, but it could be an open tank, isn't it? I think Kingsley should note that. It's just coming to me right now. Now, we can detriangulate it. We can try detriangulate it. And how do we do that? We want to keep this thing out of cycle. We want to keep it out of triangulation. When we detriangulate it, greenhouse gas will disappear. We are going to restore Earth. Global warming will do what? We disappear. And that is the import of this lesson that we are taking this afternoon. Now, when we look at the biomass plastic waste as a trouble, what are their sources? I want to quickly make us to look at them. Agricultural waste, forest waste, livestock waste, individual residual waste derived, and different type of mass waste are there. We also have different sources for plastic. We have different sources from synthetic fiber, painting, coating, tire thread, abr abrasion, and different types of them. But do we have opportunity in all of this? I am going to explain them in a while. Can we get anything out of this? And when we look at it, when we talk about different sources, of biomass and plastic waste. What complication do we have in the current time? Presently, I don't know how many of us notice that when we go to buy paracetamol, they no longer put it in the bottle. They use plastic, PET, and different form of them. And they are usually brown. I don't know how many of us noticed that when you buy, uh, what is it called, Martina, it comes in brown bottle. You know, those liquids are sensitive to light. Because we want to solve that problem, they put some chemicals in the plastic 
that make them to be carcinogenic when you are burning them in the open. We have the responsibility to enjoy the technology. We also have the responsibility to find way of managing this waste. We have the responsibility. How do we go about it? That's the complication that we are living with now. And I want to quickly take notice of something before we move on. I want to post some statistics. You discover that in the recent time, the increase in production of plastic had increased from 2 million metric ton per year in 1950 to 381 million metric ton per year in 2020. And let me talk more. For those of us that want to look further, out of this waste that we are generating, what percentage has been recycled? Statistics confirm 20% has been recycled. The 80% are still living with us. 25% were incinerated. Every one of us seated here know what comes from incineration. Then, 55% has been landfilled. Yes, some advanced country can get methane and some other producer gas from landfilling. Can we get it in Nigeria? Do we have the money to drive it? Can Ghana do that? They cannot. That's why I was just saying that we are looking at what we, as low-income economy, can do so that we live our own life as they are living their own life. So uh, the next question is that when we continue to consume this, what economy do we want to assume? Do we want to go for a linear economy? Is it going to be that we take it or make it, we use it, and we waste it, continue to increase it in the incinerator. That is the linear economy. The second option is to recycle it. But don't forget I have mentioned that some of them are non-recyclable. You still remember? What do we do with the non-recyclable? Are we continuing to allow them to be staring at our face? Are we going to continue to allow them to, well, we say, ah, the global warming is actually killing us. We know we are all contributing to it together. What is it that we can do? That takes us to the next uh, contemplation. Like I said, in some advanced countries, they have taken advantage of landfilling. And uh, they have been able to look at the potential of powering 8 to 18 million homes by producing 7,140 gigawatt hour. They, they have also estimated that they can take 61.46 of natural gas and 33.54 of coal consumption in UK can be replaced when solid waste management with the option of waste to energy is operated. That is the potential that can be achieved. But it is confirmed that low-income economy cannot. But it will introduce you that the rate at which low-income economy countries are generating waste is almost equal to the rate at which the people that can actually manage it are generating. So in this background, I want to talk about two technologies that I've worked with and see what can be done and see which one the country is trying to accept and see which one we can actually collaborate upon and see which one we can bring to the society and uh, get the best of it. Like I said, I'm bringing my first hypothesis in, good, in, uh, green, in green form again for us to consider it. It is obvious that biomass plastic waste generation 
has been designated unavoidable. If you are sitting, you will see that you are already generating them. Now, how do we continue to live? Now, the next thing is, um, I'm introducing the first one, soviated polystyrene resin for a as a matrix in plastic composite development. At this stage, I have to reference my mentor, Professor Suleiman Age Abdukarim. You know, I was just coming, finishing my PhD in Lautech. I came and he returned from Alikma as the vice chancellor, 2015. That day we met at the car park and he said, George, I saw you in my dream today. That was the way he was saying it. He said, I saw us doing the work together. I said, which works? I was laughing. He said, I saw a dream, a work in my dream, and I saw you doing it together with me. And I said, what is it? He said, I saw it. But I wouldn't know how it's going to go. But I know, now that you have finished your PhD, let's start it. He said, go and find the way, the chemical route of recycling polystyrene. I'm telling you, that's the way it started. I just checked the literature, how are they recycling it? I look at the solvent that can dissolve it. I pick one. Today, we had, together with him, I had more than 50 publications on that singular subject. <laughs> and uh, uh, we had two patents from it. I'm going to talk about it. Now, we had look at it in different way. At this stage, we are doing hand lay up. Polystyrene has come to replace epoxy. Every problem of epoxy has been eliminated by polystyrene. Polystyrene-based resin is non-carcinogenic. If it is carcinogenic, I will have not been here because I work with it every day. And uh, we have done a lot of tests to confirm the chemical constituents and everything. The way we do it, we have been able to. And uh, after we, there are challenges that we have. One of the challenges is the curing rate. It cures at a minimum of seven days when we use of, uh, room curing. And the number of curing, number of day of curing increases as the thickness of the slab that you are making increases. Now, when we had engagement with Nigeria Army, I had another challenge to improve on the curing. And by the grace of God, together with one of my associates that are here, we have been able to get a thermal curing that if you want products tomorrow morning, just give us time and dates. I'll talk about that product very soon. We can produce tons of it. The curing can be achieved in less than three hours now. Accelerated curing. And um, uh, we had been able to combine uh, usage of uh, polystyrene resin as matrix for several combinations of biomass. That is where biomass plastic co-processing comes in. We notice biomass like plantain stock. If you are going to Ilori, all the markets that you go, you will see plantain stock being generated every now and then. Go to different farm. Then we have used, we have partnered with sawmill. Instead of them burning their waste every day, we had partnered with them. We had partnered with a rice processing mill to get the waste, the rice husk. And we have used it in commercial quantity. I'm going to show us later. But the question is, were we able to get enough mechanical energy that we stand, me sitting like this, standing like this, me sitting on it like this, and uh, that takes me to mechanical properties that we have been able to get for all the products. It is actually sufficiently confirming all the standard, both British, Nigeria standard, and American standard. And we have been able to patent 
one of these for furniture application. Presently, we are engaging uh, the funders to actually uh, use it to furnish one, uh, two of our uh, all in the university. Instead, uh, there are some of them whose uh, seats has been destroyed. We want to use them to replace it, and that is being moderated by uh, the university. Now, let me go to the second one. The second one is uh, biomass plastic co-carbonization. As many of us that have been used to thermochemical uh, processing of waste, I want to say this publicly. You can find co-hydrothermal. You can find co-gasification. You can find co-pyrolysis. But it was my group and I that first attempted co-carbonization at plastic inclusion of less than 10%. Now, what is it that we used? This is the reactor. The reactor uses two chamber and is powered by bow fuel. The reactor powered by bow fuel and uh, uh, is the inner one operates by carbonization. This, the outer part operates by controlled gasification. It is top lit. The extension is for capturing of soot, fume ex exhaust pipe. Now we have been able to look at, recently we had the third party that represented Coca-Cola. You know, the Coca-Cola produced uh, the, the label is PVC. And uh, you notice that it is difficult to recycle. So we look at how can we get the Coca-Cola products recycled with biomass. Now, another thing that we did was uh, the one that has the aluminum lining. Lined Aluminium lined with plastic. You know, aluminium is, line, is being lined with the plastic because of the biological control, microbial control. When you put the food item in it, it's not going to degrade. And it's still waterproof. So by that, when it becomes a waste, it is difficult to recycle. Now, we have been able to achieve that. And these are the list of the co-carbonization attempt, we have done sugarcane baggers with low-density polyethylene, elephant grass with low-density polyethylene, we have done leaves with PVC, and leaves with BOPP. And uh, that is by axially stretched plastic that are combined with aluminum. Now, what do we get from this? we get activated carbon. We get carbon-based material that can be used as conductor. One of them we did and partnered with a laboratory in South Africa for the production of superconductor. So what I'm saying in essence is that that which that is a problem can be turned to wealth, like the vice chancellor said. Now, let me just take you through the two way that we have applied it in the public, these two technologies that I'm talking about. The first one was making wood plastic composites from biomass plastic waste. So when we do this, this is what we get, redeeming the public waste. We partner with sawmill and we partner with rice mill, and we are able to achieve uh, the products. The product in this picture is 100% recycled material. 
Presently, this product is with Technology Incubation Center in Abuja. We did an exhibition two years ago and a big interest. And uh, luckily for us, it has been patented before the exhibition. Now, at this junction, I have a work with uh, Engineer Muye in civil engineering. And what is it? We identify that most of the houses in the Loni, you see the seepage. We are looking at how to turn our plastic to powder and use it as an aggregate in building material. And uh, by the grace of God, we have been able to mold block and uh, several products which the students have done successfully while I'm on sabbatical here. Now, things like that could be source of wealth, creation, and generation. Like I said, we can detriangulate the triangulation problem that the growth in population, the growth in demand for uh, food, for energy, has created with the waste generation. We can detriangulate it. It can be detriangulated. And uh, when we detriangulate it, unemployment problem will fly. Because people will be engaging in biomass plastic valorization. Now, uh, what we did with this was that uh, after we had been able to get the curing right, it becomes something that we can do, trim it, get it to the furniture, and they use it. And do you know when we can get this? It is water resistance. It is termite resistance. It can be used in several applications. And when this is used, it improves our economy by taking it back from the waste stream. And as this one is not going to be emitting any greenhouse gas again, it is made in a safe product already. That is application one. The second application I'm sharing with us this evening is my relationship with Nigeria Army. I've been able to develop ballistic bullet resistance products from <laughs> biomass plastic valorization. You know, uh, this was the date that we set in Bauchi to do the shooting after the products. I went alongside the director of uh, uh, research then, uh, that was uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Adimula. Professor Adimula, myself, and the army, we went there. And um, this is what we discovered. What we had in Uniloni now can stop 9 mm meter, can stop 9 mm meter, this bullet that they normally use at 5 meter. And it can store AK 47 at 15 meter. <laughs> As I'm talking to you, the problem of curing has been achieved. The university is in business. That is the truth, presently. I believe. Under the spirit of God, those of us that are led to save our environment from trouble, there are a lot of products that can come out of it. As a low-income economy country, we can go in this way. Nobody will be able to sponsor our waste to energy now unless the economy improves. I know economists are here. Because uh, it, it has to be that money is put there, and the, the, the rate of return, recovery of funds, could be a problem. But if we get something that people use every day, like I was telling the new director in the university now, 
Provided we are able to get the funding from Third Fund and get all the problem of our chair solved, it's going to save university a lot of funds. Not only fund, environmental problem. We partner with uh, the sawmill in Iloni, and they no longer burn their sawmill sawdust again. Everybody is good. The society is good. The atmosphere is good. The greenhouse gas is uh, controlled. Then the third application is uh, co-carbonization. Somebody here can start a business. Presently, uh, somebody in Nestle is talking with us because we have been able to do electrically powered reactor of the one that I introduced the other time that I can have it here and put it outside here and plug it all the biomass plastic waste at a particular proportion. Because if the plastic is more than biomass, you know, the, the rheological flow will be a problem. So we stop at 9% now, because that's the, the, but you discover that aspect ratio of biomass is usually bigger than the plastic. Uh -huh. So the biomass is less dense than the plastic. So you have more of biomass that will control, that is actually the gimmicks of co-carbonization. I'm saying this for as many of us that want to openly go into this. Then I want to say that what I said at the beginning is confirmed. That we can grow our economy by going into biomass, plastic, co-processing. Because it has been confirmed that the majority of the municipal solid waste is biomass plastic in nature. So I believe as individual, as university, as community, we can be partner in this and get our society to be a better place. I want to conclude. Circular economy is achievable. Once plastic is produced, it can be kept in cycle. We can have zero waste. I want to be an apostle of that. And I am committed to continue developing processes, way to keep us in circular economy. I believe the majority of us that are in sciences, in engineering, would like to join me. Uh, so as to get our world to be in a better place as we do this. The usage of biomass plastic as secondary raw material I want to appreciate Raw Material Research and Development Council. I attended a training with them in the focus of making raw material from uh, uh, biomass plastic. We can make secondary raw material from waste. And the incessant burning of sawmill waste and the rice husk can be controlled. I believe. Uh, Lout, uh, Landmark University uh, SDG research value chain can be enhanced via intentional biomass plastic waste valorization. Uh, these are the few references consulted in the course of uh, getting this work done. I want to, at this point, acknowledge the Vice Chancellor outgoing and incoming once again. I want to acknowledge the role of my PhD supervisor, Professor O.O. Ogunleye, in absentia. He introduced me into concept development while I was doing PhD. I want to appreciate the effort of Professor Abdul Karim in this journey. I want to appreciate my students. You know, in the past five, seven years, they come in batches. I no longer see them as students, like I say it, they have been my associates. You know, that is what God has helped me to change. Yes, I don't, we, when we go around, in fact, this biomass plastic waste concept, we got it myself and, Josh, and Joshua Igalu when we are going to eat in the cafeteria. I just saw leaf and uh, sachet water, and I took the picture. Joshua said, oh God, what is this? I said, I will tell you. I'm seeing something now. And that was how we started Balmas Plastic Co-Carbonization. 
acknowledge Joshua, Unifade. Uh, those are the people in the first set. I acknowledge uh, uh, Joshua is now in U.S. for his PhD. Samuel and Comfort are not here. I acknowledge Kinsley. I acknowledge Ibuka. Joy is here. I acknowledge Engineer Pupola of SON. We have worked together on terms, and we have been able to develop this up to this point. I want to appreciate the grace that the landmark has given me. I have my undergraduate students here. I like 10 of them that I've been able to see. I appreciate all of you. You are the people that have joined my life. I don't have any other thing I use my weekend to do. This actually had made my social life to be zero anyway. But I think I'm enjoying it. I appreciate Professor and Mrs. Thank you for being prophetic about my journey here. You said it and I saw it. And uh, I thank God for the encouragement I received from my HOD. He has been a friend and brother. Thank you very much. I cannot continue this without appreciating Engineer Muye. I've worked with him and those work will be speaking very soon. I appreciate the technologists. I must say this, it is easy to work with technologists here than anywhere I've worked. Thank you very much, very well. On this note, I say thank you for listening. Yeah. On this note, I am presenting this lecture as delivered to the Vice Chancellor. Thank you, Mom. Please, let's keep the hands clapping. Thank you very much. Please let's have our seats. That's a very detailed and insightful lecture we've had today. I will at this point call on the Vice Chancellor for the next assignment. The Vice Chancellor Ma. Sorry, Dr. Adenini, did you come with your family? Okay. Okay. Well, I am here just to say that the work continues. Um, Dr. Professor Adenini, Maybe we award the professorial seat to him. Approved? Approved? Thank you. We appreciate the delivery. The incoming vice chancellor, we just whispered to ourselves and said, this is not a lecture, this is a teaching. It's a teaching. It goes beyond lecturing. And it's well, well delivered. It's still piercing into my bone and marrow, as you have said it. We want to say that, sir, you are not going. We won't let you go until you duplicate those things you presented in Landmark. Approved? Approved. That is just that. So, Vice Chancellor, incoming Vice Chancellor, sir, you have to see to it that he does not go. <laughs> By all means. The way we brought you in is the way we will retain you here. Thank you so much, and God bless. Thank you, Ma. Please, let's put our hands together once again. Thank you. At this juncture, 
it's time to have the goodwill messages. And before I call on all the people that we have, that will be giving the goodwill messages, I just want to quickly roll out the names of uh, visitors that are here to identify with the lecturer of today. And I'll start with Dekin Professor Rotimi Okunloye. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Dekin Dr. John Adekwaju. Please, where are you? Thank you very much. Dekin Michael Adebayo. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Dekin Barrister Sunday Olawekwo. It's nice having you, sir. Engineer Ayobami Kukwola. Thank you very much for being here. Mr. Kinsley Iwozo, thank you. It's nice having you here. Mr. Ibuka Emenike, thank you very much. And Joy Adeleke, lovely to have you. Thank you very much. I'll be calling on these people to give the goodwill messages in the way I'm going to be calling them. First and foremost, I'll be calling the Olomo of Omoaro, Kabye Sisa to come and give your goodwill message. Please, Engineer Akokwala Yobami, please get set. Mr. Kinsley Wozo and Mr. Mikaela Mogaji will be having your goodwill messages. Please, let's put our hands together as we welcome the KBSC. KBSC, sir. The first time the man, the Incoming and the outgoing day. Uh, I say well done. You see, when I'm in an academic environment like this, I'm usually carried away. And I look at myself, oh, why haven't I belong in? <laughs> to the lecturer, the presenter, sincerely you have lectured as aptly presented or said by the vice chancellor, you have lectured. Uh, it's most unfortunate if people are working like this and the government is not doing anything to encourage it. It's so, it's so discouraging. I, you can, I heard him when he was saying, when he was partnering with the civil engineering department, how the byproducts I've been metamorphosed into block making. What again do we need? We are destroying the environment every day by digging sands, carrying gravel, granite all about. Uh, I wanted them to see a small impact in the ecosystem and biodiversity. In your process of changing the plastic, when you are talking of curing or not curing, what impact has it in the biodiversity and in the ecosystem? Because we are human beings that are living on the ground. And you have talked, you have talked about sustainability. Without us, can sustainability be attained? I say well done. Uh, you, you have lectured me today. I've added a bit to my own knowledge too. But it's so unfortunate. I can't be in the classroom again. Thank you. Thank you. KBSC. Keep at a pelori. Keep at a pelasek. I did pelori, sir. In Jesus' name. Thank you very much. I'll be calling Engineer Popola Yobami. Please come and give your goodwill message. Thank you very much, the Vice Chancellors, outgoing and incoming, the Oriades on seat, the guest lecturer, distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to stand on the protocol that has been established. I bring you greetings from the Director General and Chief Executive of the Standards Organization of Nigeria, Malam Farouk Salim and the State Coordinator of Standards Organization of Nigeria in Kwara State, Mr. Feisha Ayen, who is unavoidably absent due to some official assignments in Lagos. I'm here representing him 
bringing you goodwill message to this university community and also to the guest lecturer of today. The guest lecturer has been a friend of the organization here in Kwara State, especially in competence and human capacity development, of which I am a major beneficiary in the state office. You heard him when he was doing his acknowledgement. He has conferred on me one of his associates. <laughs> and it's so nice to be known and called by someone like this. Uh, the first two papers that I ever published in life actually is one of the citations that I actually has. And it's a major one. Having a circular economy is actually major in the heart of the organization. We are saddled the responsibility of standardization and quality assurance in the organization. And there's no way you can ensure that the economy is growing without making sure that you have standard products, processes, and systems in place. And that has been the driving force of the organization since 1971 that it was established. And currently now under the leadership of the Director General and the Chief Executive. And that is why I bring you greetings from him today. That your good works is being known. What you have ventured into in bringing solution to the economy. The organization is set to ensure it doesn't become one of the negatives that you have identified by ensuring that we work with you. Because where we are currently now, that uh, doctor has approved, Professor Adini is taking us to, is in the conceptualization of this product as it comes. And then we are committed to working with you to ensure that this product are standardized, fit for use, confirmed, and then sent uh, with confidence into the Nigerian market to ensure that they will go out there and do very well. The university has cooperated with the organization. I still remember our visit with the state coordinator with the outgoing vice chancellor. We actually appreciate you for that. And I want to promise you that we will soon be here again, especially with this big thing that you have started with Dr. Adini. Thank you so very much. And please accept the highest regard of the Director General and Chief Executive of Standards Organization of Nigeria. Thank you very much. I'll be calling Mr. Kinsley Uwazo from the Nigerian Sugar Institute, Abuja. Please let's put our hands together for him. Good day, everyone. I beg to stand on all existing protocols. Um, I would say that I find myself very lucky, more than most people here, because I've had the opportunity several times to learn at the feet of the presenter of today. He's a down-to-earth person. He teaches, even when you do not understand, he's always willing to re-explain and explain and explain. That is something I can say authoritatively that we do not have in many lecturers in Nigeria today because I have studied both in the country and outside the country. So I can say that he is someone who should be emulated and he is someone who Landmark University should not let go. One of the landmark works that the Nigerian Sugar Institute had with Dr. Adeni was the um, waste from sugarcane processing called sugarcane bagasse is used as fuel in the industry. However, the chewing cane is left on the street when people chew cane. One of the things Dr. Adeni has done regarding biomass plastic co-carbonization with the Institute is he has combined it with face mask. We know because of the COVID-19, we have lots of face mask waste. So he combined it and then we're able to produce biochar, which we're very grateful to him for. Thank you, sir. I want to also state that Landmark University should not let this man go. Because if you let him go, you have lost something big and other collaborators that can help move his products from the lab to the industry should also come in. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. We won't let him go. Okay, I'll be calling on Professor Rotimi Okunloe to give his goodwill message. Thank you, sir. Please, let's put our hands together. The outgoing vice chancellor, the incoming vice chancellor, uh, amiable Professor Adeniyi, and a KBC and the Lumen Council, KBCO, and the great uh, lecturers, my colleagues and students in this place. I want to thank God for the opportunity to be here today. In fact, the moment I saw the uh, invite, I was looking forward to this day. And I'm very grateful to God that the pastorate and the diaconate of Emmanuel Baptist Church has actually asked us to convey a goodwill message. There is something you didn't say about the guest lecturer. He was and is still, he was the director of the Sunday School Department and is still a very outstanding Sunday School teacher of so many years, for so many years. As is, he has impacted in the secular, in academics, the same thing has happened in the uh, spiritual uh, circle. Uh, when he's teaching the Sunday school class, either as the teacher to the whole church, as a whole group, or individual, or in the preparatory class, you will begin to catch revelation knowledge as if God actually inspired him. That's exactly the way it is. And deep calls to deep when it comes to revelation knowledge of the word of God. And I'm not surprised. The reason is that anybody, you can see his acknowledgement. He's not priding himself about anything. He owes everything to the source and sustainer. And that is the secret. And so I'm calling everybody here, particularly the upcoming generation, that if all of us can connect to the source and sustainer, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the sky will be our takeoff point. And we're going to get there. I just want to say two things that are very key about this lecture. This lecture uh, talking about breakthrough invention of Professor Adeni has two uh, very, uh, you know, society impacting impact in Nigeria. One, in the area of security. Those things that he has done uh, with respect to uh, AK-47 and all other ammunitions, it means that at very minimal cost, you could uh, develop armored vehicles, armored houses, armored, different type of armored material, offices and what have you. And we can actually take the battle to the location of terrorists in Nigeria, in West Africa, uh, anywhere they are, at minimal costs. That is something we must celebrate. I'm saying this because, you know, security votes is not audited. And under it, many people have actually scammed the Nigerian economy. But when you now have things that are developed like this, at very minimal cost, it means Nigeria will now begin to earn good money, and then we are going to secure our economy. Number two is the area of waste to wealth. The value chain, the contribution of Dr. Ad uh, Professor Adeni to the value chain in the biomass uh, conversion of waste to wealth is enormous. Imagine the deforestation that is taking place. And you now have all of those, you begin to remove them from the society. It means annual flooding will be out of the place. Then we are going to be getting manufactured material for 
furniture at minimal cost. I'm so much impressed that he talked about the fact that they are water resistance. These are very good. And it means if all of us continue to apply ourselves in the area of research, there are going to be breakthrough invention. He's doing his own in his little corner. I want to tell you that a professor is somebody who knows so much about a very little area. So if you and I can continue research, breakthrough research in our own individual corner, then it's not going to be long when Nigeria will become one of the three uh, most blessed economy in the world. And we are going to move from the low income to the high income. Once again, let me celebrate this man. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Please, let's put our hands together again for all the goodwill messages we had this afternoon. Once again, the Olomusa, we appreciate you, and the Olomo in Council, we recognize your presence, and we appreciate your being here today. Thank you very much, Sas. Thank you. Okay, we also want to recognize the online participant. I was just told now that there is a professor from Chemist University of Illinois who is online and uh, a lot of others. We appreciate and we recognize you. Thank you very much. Please, let's put our hands together for them. Okay. We'll go to the vote of thanks. But please, before I call Professor E.S. Ajishegiri for the vote of thanks, I want to quickly inform us that all Senate members and invited guests and uh, students and uh, teachers from invited schools, please immediately after this. Okay. Thank you very much, sir and ma. I appreciate it. Please, Professor Ajishegiri. Okay. I'm sorry. Please, let's make welcome the Vice Chancellor for the next assignment. Thank you. Please, let's put our hands together for her. At this juncture, may I invite the incoming Vice Chancellor, the DVC, the Registrar, to come up as we take the next assignment. Okay. So, uh, we want to appreciate the public lecturer this afternoon. I'm sure what we have in this bag will definitely not be sufficient to appreciate the delivery. Because, um, but we must still uh, mark him with the mark of landmark. And so we are bringing him up to receive the mark of landmark <laughs> as a permanent, <laughs> as a permanent um, landmarker. There's something we call Sabaste. It's a common name to landmark. It's our own departure philosophy way of saying you cannot go. So no matter how we work it out, by this we are presenting to you the mark of landmark to ensure we have a Sabbath day with you. <laughs> so, um, it's loaded. I don't have to decode what we have in the bag. So on behalf of Landmark University Management, please stay at the center. At the center, yes. On behalf of Landmark University Management, we want to appreciate this delivery this afternoon. As the sixth public lecturer, we say thank you. And we believe in you and what you will yet do for Landmark. Congratulations. Okay. 
I have been given the, the names of those online. Professor Alafara from Department of Chemistry, University of Ilori. Dr. Adeolu, our former Lucre director. Dr. Inibo, and about 43 others. Too numerous to mention. Thank you. I will acknowledge your presence here. Thank you. Please, immediately after the vote of thanks, the lecturer for today will be taking a group picture with the university management. Thank you. Thank you. Professor E.S. Ajishegiri for the vote of thanks. The Vice Chancellors, Sa Ama. <laughs> the Deputy Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, the Olum Kabesi, and the Olumu in Council, all the other chiefs, the professorate that is there, uh, our beautiful faculty, and our kings and queens. In Yoruba land, Kabesi, I crave for your indulgence to say this. They say, Egun Latin Kenyan Bale, so the inaugural lecturer. Um, when I was asked to give the vote of thanks, I was wondering, okay, I mean, how did they divide the tie of, uh, you know, a dog that it will now become the, the portion of. Uh, a Muslim cleric. Okay, <laughs> then I, I realized that, well, uh, luckily, okay, today I'm still the dean of engineering. The former inaugural, I mean, the former uh, public lecturer was from engineering. This one also is from engineering. Therefore, the next one also will be from engineering. <laughs> so, let. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, my work has been done for me. I'm just here to give an official acknowledgement. Uh, Kabiesi, we thank you for coming. We thank you for bringing the retinue of your Olomu in Council, all the chiefs that came here and all the other things. We thank you. We thank you very, very much because you make us feel at home as our host. Um, if I say this one again, I may be wrong, but I think this is perhaps the very first okay, time that uh, we have two vice chancellors okay, officially being engaged in Landmark University in my presence. Okay, <laughs> so thank you for your time. Uh, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, uh, the registrar, uh, the guests. I didn't say visitors. Guests, we thank you. And uh, we are showing that we appreciate your coming by acknowledging that we are not taking your coming for granted. Thank you for the time. Thank you for the opportunity for us to interact and know you. Uh, the Senate members, the professorate, the faculty, the staff, the technologies, the amazing kings and queens that are here. We say thank you very much. I can go on and on and on, but I will be taking too much of our time. The deans, the directors, and uh, the controllers, including finance, thank you very, very much for coming. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. Um, sorry, let me take the privilege of my being here that as soon as we are done with uh, these ceremonies, okay, the closing ceremony for the SWEP will be taking place. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, please, can we quickly have the group photograph with the management? And while we are doing that, please, the management, Landmark University management and the guest lecturer, Please, for your pictures. Let's take it now. I'll use this opportunity to also recognize Hallelujah Secondary School. Thank you very much for being here.
we, uh, your teachers and the students, we appreciate your coming. Thank you very much. God bless you. Landmark University Secondary School, LUSS. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We appreciate your coming and all other schools. Thank you. Okay. Yes, the group photograph, Sir and Mars. Please, let's quickly take it now. Please, deans of colleges, can we please take pictures with him? Deans and directors, please let's join the group photograph. All deans and directors. Okay, the, the guests, please let's join them. Thank you. Professor it. The professors around, please let's join. We'll be taking all other pictures after. HODs, directors, and the deans on all professors. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll be inviting the chaplain to say the closing prayers, and immediately after that, the studio will be taking us in the university anthem, followed by the Nigerian national anthem. Thank you. Chaplain Caesar. Hallelujah. Shall we please rise on our feet? Praise the Lord. We started with Thanksgiving and we are going to conclude this thanking God at the same time. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have every reason to say thank you. We started with you and you are here with us to the very end. Thank you for the impact of this meeting today. And thank you for making everything successful. We give the glory, the honor back to you, O Lord. Not unto us, not unto us, O Lord, but unto you alone be all the glory. Take the glory to yourself right now, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the impact of today. We keep speaking forever in the name of Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The University Anthem Studio. Please let's remain standing.
Thank you very much. Thank you, you sirs and mass. Our, Our kings and queens. And queens. Lovely. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Put, Thank your, you. Hands Put your hands together for yourself. yourself. Please, all, all invited, invited guests, guests and, and schools, schools. Please, make please make sure you take, take your refreshments. Your refreshments. Okay. okay, please, the secondary schools that are here, please come and take a group picture with the lecturer of today. The schools and the teachers, please come and take a picture with the lecturer. <laughs> 